Hey guys, welcome back to my channel today. In today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you guys the truth about Ola Henriksen. Now, if you guys are unfamiliar with my makeup truth and skincare truth secrets videos, these are videos that I do that essentially give you guys the truth about brands, brand secrets. I combine my nursing background with my personal experience using products and I'm able to just tell you guys what's what so that you can spend your money wisely, not waste your money on stuff that sucks or isn't good because these things are really expensive. Now, Ola Henriksen is today's video topic because so many of you guys requested this after I've done so many other brands like Charlotte Tilbury, Tarte, and Too Faced. And Ola Henriksen is one that I have tried so many things from you guys. I feel like I've tried almost everything from the brand. So I do feel like I have a lot to say and knowing some of the stuff I know now, I'm gonna be sharing with you guys some really heartbreaking things about this line, things that make it huge cons in my eyes, but there's also some pros. So we're gonna get to everything in today's video. Now, without further ado, let's chat all things Ola Henriksen. Now, the first thing I wanna share with you guys is the brand as a whole has a really powerful pro, and that is that they are a cruelty-free brand. It is also a vegan brand. So for those of you that are vegan, that are really conscious of not using animal products and not consuming animal products, this is also a skincare line that has that qualification. Another thing to note is that Ola Henriksen has a lot of products that fit under the Clean at Sephora product seal. This is one that a lot of you guys tell me you really like the product seal, you think it helps you with picking certain skincare products out that are formulated without ingredients that are pretty bad for your skin and it's a good way to kind of have a quick glance as to if this makeup product is clean or not. Now for me, I'm gonna be sharing with you guys reasons why I think this seal will only go so far, but I do think that the cleanest Sephora seal is a really good start at taking a quick glance at a product as to whether or not at least it's not formulated with oxybenzone, sulfates, formaldehydes, formaldehyde and releasing agents and things like that, that can potentially be cancer causing ingredients in the skin. Ola Henriksen has a lot of citrusy based branding. If you look at some of the product line that he talks about in shares, we have the Truth Serum, which is one that has a bright orange color. It is a orangey smelling kind of serum. We have his new Truth Juice Cleanser, which is a nice orange smelling cleanser. And we also have the Sea Rush Moisturizer, which is another citrus based product in his line. We also have the banana cream, which is one I do have right here. And we also have the banana primer. And that is something that I have used up to its entirety. Now, once upon a time, I would have been a big advocate for some of these Ola Henriksen products and most likely have recommended it to you guys without doing the proper research. So that is something that I look back now and I regret. Why? Because a lot of these products contain a citrus based extract that is incredibly acidic and therefore very sensitizing to the skin. And it's not a good ingredient overall to include in skincare at this point, because a lot of the dermatologists and estheticians are recommending that even though the citrus extracts are good for discoloration and brightening up the skin, it's also incredibly acidic and damaging on the other end. So over the long haul, your skin is going to become much more irritated, much more irritable, and you'll find that in years to come, you won't be able to use those same products anymore and you'll have no idea why. The Truth Serum is one, you guys, that I feel like is probably the most popular Ola Henriksen product out there. It was the first product that was introduced to me when I was a consumer looking for skincare at Sephora probably 10 years ago now where they said this truth serum is the best it's a vitamin C serum it helps with brightening it's just amazing you need to try it the one thing I love about the truth serum is the glass bottle I think it's great for recyclability but there's a lot of other things that are really huge cons that make me think it's really not worth it the first con from the Truth Serum is that we don't know how much vitamin C is actually in it. And Ola Henriksen has never stated how much vitamin C is in this serum, which makes me kind of assume that it's probably pretty minimal. The eye cream used to be one of my favorites and it is something I'm going to be using up to its entirety, but then I will not be repurchasing because this is one you can tell right away that it has some added fragrance in it. It smells like caramel, so you know, like what could smell like caramel besides something like perfumey? <laughs> 
And when you actually look at the ingredient list, I'm gonna pull it up here on Sephora. I'm gonna bet money there's fragrance in here because there's no way something naturally smells like caramel. But when I'm looking down the list here, of course I see the citrus extracts, of course, like the Ola Hendrickson stamp essentially. <laughs> Then we see the perfume slash fragrance probably midway in the ingredient list. So just like the citrus fruit extracts that Ola Henriksen really loves using, there's a lot of added fragrance in his skincare line as well that don't do your skin any favors. Right now I'm 30 years old and I used to put on anything that was on my skin that would give me an instant glow, instant hydration, instant feeling of like, wow, this is working. And that is something that Ola Henriksen does really, really well. Now I don't mean to drink the brand. I do think that if he makes changes and takes out these ingredients, these are still formulated with some amazing products and ingredients as well. But the fact that he has those harmful ingredients in it just makes it like, oh, like why? You're so close. You have so many other great ingredients. Like just take out that last piece. You don't need added fragrance. And even though you're selling your brand as like citrus smelling, you don't need it to smell that potent of citrus to hook people onto skincare. If you have the beneficial ingredients, they're going to come back. One really good guide if you find that you are unsure about certain ingredients in skincare and you don't necessarily have access to a dermatologist or an esthetician, I have found actually on Paula's Choice website, which is a really nice website that talks about skincare and the benefits of ingredients and the disadvantages of other ingredients, she has a like ingredient dictionary where if you look up a certain ingredient, it has a rating of whether it's good, best, average, or poor. So if you look up the ingredients that I'm sharing, like the citrus extra, the citrus extract, as well as fragrance, it's gonna show poor as the rating, just like what I've learned as a nurse and the background that I have, and also talking to estheticians and dermatologists, this is not an ingredient that is beneficial in any skincare. I'm going to leave a link to the ingredient dictionary for your reference in case you're ever wanting to look up certain ingredients, but I do think that this is a very good resource because it's backed by studies that are done from skincare experts. Now, I used to really love the Ola Henriksen masks and I still do if I'm honest. One of my favorites is the PHA like fat uh, facial mask. This is essentially one that gives the skin an instant glow and this is one that I think really, really hooks people because of the effect on the skin right away. This one has a PHA kind of component to it which is essentially a more mild version of an AHA, so a chemical exfoliant. However, there is that same citrus extract in this product as well as added fragrance. So this is something once again that I'm going to use up and and unfortunately not repurchase because my skin is just, it's worth so much more <laughs> than putting a known irritating ingredient on it, even though this one, you guys, is so good. It's almost like that instant glow to the skin. It has a teeny bit of a tingle, but not too much, but it's definitely something that I think the brand uses as a bit of a hook. Like, wow, you get that visible result right away. Do you see how amazing this product works for the skin and how it makes your skin so healthy looking and whatever, but in reality, the perfume and the citrus extract in it over the long term isn't doing your skin any favors. The next thing I wanna chat about is the Retin Alt line from Ola Henriksen, which is essentially the alternative to retinol that he claims is a more gentler version of retinol. It's something that gently resurfaces the skin to reduce fine lines and wrinkles. I've done a lot of research myself on this, looking into medical journals and articles in the Journal of Dermatology in particular. And this ingredient is known as a gentler version of retinol. It does take the same pathway through the skin when it comes to breaking down and producing that really nice anti-aging benefit. Research is showing Showing in particular in these medical journals that this particular ingredient is really the most beneficial at the 0.5 to 2% concentration within the product. And just like the truth serum where we don't know the percentage of vitamin C that is in that serum, Ola Henriksen also does not claim the percentage of this ingredient within his retin alt line. So we don't know if it's actually at the percentage or concentration where it is a potent and actively beneficial ingredient to the skin or not. So that's also the first mystery when it comes to his line. We do know though that this is a good ingredient. It's a natural antioxidant and I'm gonna botch the heck out of what this is called. 
I think it's called Baku, Baku Chayol, <laughs> Baku Chayol. I have no idea. But either way, that's what the research in the journals is showing. It is a very promising alternative to retinol to produce the same benefits to the skin. However, it has to be delivered in a certain concentration. And that is something that Ola Henriksen has still not provided in his product description. We don't know what percentage is actually in it. The other thing that I'm going to say that trumps essentially the beneficial antioxidant properties that these that this product line offers is the fact that it still has fragrance and the citrus extract in it. So like I said, I'm going to call this the Ola Henriksen stamp, which is essentially if it has citrus extract, you know, it's an Ola Henriksen product. <laughs> so, so terrible, but it has the fragrance in it. So essentially it's being counterproductive in your skincare. We have this antioxidant that hopefully is in the concentration needed for, you know, effectiveness on the skin. But then we have the added fragrance in it, which essentially really negates the positivity of this line in general. So is this something that I would recommend? No, I still think that they need to formulate things like this without added fragrance, because that way it makes the skin more so have a positive impact from the skincare versus the fact that it's giving some positive effects with essentially very negative effects as well. And therefore, what's the point? Even the glow toner has added fragrance in it, you guys. And it's even troubling where the fragrance lies in the list. It's almost, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. It's the seventh ingredient in there. So to me, that's higher than some of the other Ola Henriksen ingredient list that I've seen. But the fact that it has fragrance so freaking high is like, dang it, really? <sighs> and this is also one that sits on top of the skin. It's not something that you wash off. So like a mask, a mask is something that you know, a lot of the Ola Henriksen ones are on for like 15 minutes or so, and then you wash them off. A wash off product doesn't penetrate the skin as long as one that sits on the skin for a lot longer. So when you have a fragrance that's added to a toner, to a moisturizer, to a serum, it is incredibly more important to make sure that you are making those types of products fragrance free, because those are the types of products that just sit and penetrate the skin. Whereas you have a mask, although it does do some penetrating, so to speak, <laughs> wow, I'm saying that word way too much. This is something that you end up washing off after a certain time period. So it does minimize the impact of the harmful ingredients on the skin. This one, you can tell it smells like the lemon, just like how Ola Henriksen always has his stuff smell like. It's just, it's so captivating for a consumer. In fact, it's one that attracts someone like me very much because I am one that loves that fruity, citrusy kind of smell. I buy perfumes that I place on my body on purpose to smell like fruity and fresh and things like that. So obviously this type of skincare line is incredibly attractive to someone like me, but doing a deep dive into the ingredients, it's really made me learn a lot. Now, looking at a lot of the other Ola Henriksen ingredients and the other products in his line that I have tried, one of my favorites is the Cold Plunge Mask, and it is one that actually does not have the citrus extract in it, which is Ola Henriksen's stamp, I feel like, but this does not have that. It does not have the citrusy smell either, so that was my first clue was like, oh, maybe this is one that doesn't have it and it doesn't have it. However, it does have peppermint oil. Peppermint oil is also a very sensitizing ingredient according to the medical journals that I have looked over, which is really too bad because now you're still having ingredients that are doing some counterproductive things to the skin that you're not supposed to really be wanting from something like this. The cold plunge mask is one that's supposed to basically clean out your pores, give you that nice glow, help to nourish and moisturize the skin, and it does also have some nice ingredients in it as well. It does have lactic acid in it, which is a really good chemical exfoliant. It does have the clay, which is a nice one, but this is, <laughs> but the fact that it has peppermint oil, I mean, peppermint oil is much more sensitizing to the skin versus peppermint water because it's just more potent in the oil form. But this is something that you notice right away when you smell it. It has like the peppermint smell right away. And you're like, oh, it smells so good. It's so pepperminty. And like I said, ask Jenna six months ago, what you think of this mask. And she'll say, I love it because it's a bright blue mask as well. Really nice instant effect on the skin. But the reality is still contains some very sensitizing ingredients 
that can act as harmful things to the skin. Ola Henriksen also has some physical exfoliants in his line. I'm gonna quickly share some thoughts on this as well, just so you guys have some more information. But this is the Transforming Walnut Scrub and its main ingredient is walnut powder. Now, Kylie Skin's walnut scrub was under massive media attention for months and months because of people saying how abrasive it is to the skin. The reality is walnuts are abrasive to the skin. They're not considered the gold standard for a physical exfoliant. If you choose to use a physical exfoliant at all, by the way, because I do find that a lot of experts say that physical exfoliants are not necessarily meant for everyone, usually just for specific skin types and not every person can benefit from a physical exfoliant. So this is the Walnut Scrub. Again, it has added fragrance in it as well, so that also makes it a no-no. <laughs> But basically, this is something that I personally wouldn't recommend because I have tested it out myself and I do find that it's fairly abrasive on my normal skin type. So I don't even really use a lot of physical exfoliants, to be honest. Like once a month, maybe I'll use one. I honestly think that they don't do a lot of good for my skin. So I tend to stay away from them and more so use chemical ones. But the reason why walnut powder is so abrasive to the skin is simply because it's really tough to make the edges of the walnut shells smooth enough to have it not be so abrasive at the microscopic level. So that's just something to think about. The almond scrub in the power peel, believe it or not, is actually walnut shell powder as well, but it has the sweet almond fruit extract in it to give it that almond kind of smell. The sweet almond plant extract itself is not sensitizing to the skin, but it still has the citrus extract in it on top of that, which is a sensitizing ingredient, and it also has fragrance in it in the other steps listed in the power peel. So unfortunately, it still contains a lot of sensitizing ingredients, which make the mask not as beneficial over the long haul. So personally, if you're one that's serious about skincare, I certainly wouldn't recommend Ola Henriksen as a brand moving forward until I see that he's removing added fragrance from his products and he's removing the citrus extracts that are incredibly acidic and sensitizing to the skin. As for me, I will be using these skincare products up, but I will not be repurchasing from his line until I see these ingredient changes. I really hope that this video was very beneficial for you guys. I did a lot of research myself and also pulled from my nursing textbooks on ingredients and potency and things like that. So I really hope that you guys enjoyed it. Always, always ask dermatologists or estheticians for skincare advice when choosing skincare routines so you know that you have something that's gonna work for your skin. And until my next one, guys, take care. Thanks so much for watching. Bye, guys. You and me, everything that we've been through has made us strong. You won't believe. We've had our great, but sorry, there's a light inside of us. It shows the way.